Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is Supreme Dragon of Hidden Dragon, of Hidden Assassin, yeah, of Hidden Dragon. Uh, here today with a updated Bujin deck profile with the after the release of everything that's been released. So yeah, don't forget to like and comment down below, leave, and so don't forget to subscribe, tell your friends to check it out. And so here we go. So starting off, need three copies of Yamato. Pretty self-explanatory. This is your main monster of the deck. Uh, then I run two copies of Mikazuchi. Uh, when a card is sent from your hand to the graveyard during either player's turn, add one spell or trap, uh, Bujin spell or trap to your hand. Uh, it's very good. Also, if one of your Bujins gets destroyed, you can special summon it from your hand. Uh, then I run two copies of Arasuda. This guy can be normal or special summon. Uh, special summon when you remove... Uh, from play one of your Bujins in the graveyard works it's a it's a great combo piece with the next card I run which is three copies of Hirume uh, this allows the deck to be a little bit more aggressive and aggro and instead of just sitting back on Yamato the entire time uh, you can only special summon this guy by banishing one Bujin card except itself from the graveyard so you can banish it banish a card drop it and Arasuda rank four probably Susano grab or Tinky or whatever, and then you can make more plays off of that. Uh, then I run three copies of Turtle, and the reason I bumped it up from two to three is because I like having that little extra monster, and sometimes it's nice having that third Turtle in Graveyard for them to have to worry about, especially if you've already gotten rid of those two negations, so that gives me a third one. Uh, then I run two copies of Bujin Hair. This guy protects your Bujins once per turn from being destroyed by battle or card effect. So and it's all rank, it's all level four. So this is like I said, more of a, more of a uh, rank four type of spam deck. Uh, then I run just the one copy of Quillen for that uh, necessary pop when you have a Beast Warrior on field, and of course the three copies of Crane, which allows you to uh, double your original attack. So that's great to have, especially with uh, Quillos coming out. It's probably going to be a deck that'll be ran against them. And then the one honest, obvious, and that rounds out the uh, monster choices. For spells, we run three copies of Tinky. This is your searcher for your uh, beast warriors. Uh, three copies of MST to get rid of uh, problematic back rows. Three copies of duality. Um, before I go into duality, though, on the MST is another uh, card to get rid of. Be like. Um, Skill Drain, Mind Drain, Soul Drain, those types of cards. And uh, Macro, D Fisher. So then you got your three dualities because uh, they help you set up with your special summonings and getting to Yamato as quick as possible. I run just one copy of Pot of Dichotomy since you're running uh, Beast, Beast Warrior, Wing Beast. So that way you can recycle your cards as needed. Uh, two copies of Booj Incarnation, so that way if you have uh, one banished from one in your banished and you have no monsters, you can special summon one banished and one monster in your graveyard. Quick exceeds or allows for other plays. Uh, just one copy of Soul Charge. I have a feeling this is going to get uh, hit down to one, but this is really all this deck needs anyway to survive. That way you can set up, make your plays, and push for game next turn. Uh, I run two copies of Xyz Universe, and I saw this in a, oh sorry, that does it for the spell lineup. Uh, for traps, I run two copies of Xyz Universe. Uh, I saw this in another deck profile done, I, I don't remember which one it was, I think it was one I saw on Star Strike Duelist X channel, but they did a deck profile, or one of their friends did a deck profile on Bujins and was using this. Or it may have been at a YCS or something I saw. Anyway, what this does is you target two face-up Xyz monsters on the field. Doesn't say it has to be your Xyz monsters. It just says two on the field. You combine their ranks and then you special summon one Xyz monster whose rank is equal to or one less than the combined. So you can, that's how you can go into things like Felgrain and Draco Sack in this deck. Uh, I've been testing it out. It's actually really good, and it catches a lot of people off guard, so I really like it. Um, one copy of Wiretap, just for that, uh, to get rid of those 
that one pesky trap or something in case you need to. Uh, two copies of Breakthrough Skill, pretty self-explanatory because Breakthrough is very popular. And another card I'm taking in is two Chain to Spells. And the reason I'm doing that is because if they activate a spell or trap card that they have multiples of, uh, for example, like uh, they activate a Tanky or uh, Soul Charge or Breakthrough or even um, Shadal Fusion or anything like that, and especially with the Pendulums coming out, you can start taking out a lot of options for them by sending their key cards to the graveyard. Yes, they're going to get that one off, but any additional copies are going to be sent straight to the graveyard. So that's why I'm trying that out, and it's been working pretty well for me. Uh, for the extra deck, I run one copy of Felgram and one copy of Dracosec. Uh, like I said, with uh, Xyz Universe, that's how you can go into these. So that's really cool to be able to pull that off. It throws a lot of people off guard. They're not expecting that from a rank 4 type of deck. Like I said, this makes it a little more aggressive. Uh, just the one copy of Amaterasu. Uh, I like it at one because it requires three, but uh, with the way the deck's set up, you can uh, speed into it, so I really like that. Uh, just one copy of Kaga Sushi, that's really all you need. As long as this, as long as you get good meals, this guy is pretty hard to get off the field, especially with more than one turtle or hare in graveyard, plus it has two materials, so that's three, four times you can stop it from being destroyed, plus it gains 100 for each Bujin you sent to the graveyard when it was summoned. Great card. Uh, two copies of Susano, again for that extra uh, searching power to get Crane to hand or to get Turtle, Quillen, or Hare to Graveyard. It's really good for that. Uh, one number 103, great in the mirror match, great against Fire Kings, anything where uh, their original attack is going to be different from what its current attack is. Uh, takes care of a lot of cards that way. Uh, one copy of Omega. Uh, it's great to go into since this is an all-light deck. That way, if you get it on early and they have nothing to protect themselves, you can attack directly and then wait for them to activate a trap or something and then chain its effect to protect itself. Plus, it's a Beast War, so it gets the added 100 points from Tinkies. Then you got one copy of Tiger King, and the reason I run on Tiger King is to if I'm having trouble getting to my Tinkies, I can go into it, get my Tinky, get my other search off, and keep things moving that way. Uh, just one 101. I cut this from two down to one. I found myself only needing really one copy, so 101 is pretty self explanatory. Next, we have number 82, Heartland Draco. As long as Tinky is on the field, this can attack directly and it cannot be targeted by your opponent. So that's 2,000 direct each time. It's really good to have. A uh, card I recently added was Diamond Direwolf, and the reason for that is since you're running Beast, Wing Beast, and Beast Warriors, you can use its effect for that additional popping, so that's really nice to have. And of course, one Exiton Knight in case you find yourself in a situation where you need to clear the field. Uh, again, one Abyss Dweller, pretty self-explanatory to stop stuff in the graveyard. And finally, one Cowboy for that added burn damage. So that does it for my extra deck. And now for my side deck choices. Uh, I go with two copies of Bujingi Sinew because you can never have too many honest light cards in your deck. Uh, two copies of Max C in case I'm going up against a uh, spam type deck like uh, Light Swarms, Dragon Rulers, uh, Mythic Dragons, anything like that. So that way I can keep cards in hand. Uh, one copy of Mind Control for any uh, mirror matches and any other uh, decks that use level 4s. Uh, two copies of Swords of Concealing Light. This completely wrecks uh, Noble Knights and a few other decks. That puts everything face down so that way you can, uh, like say, for example, you're facing Shadals, you can flip uh, Construct face down and not have to worry about its special, not have to worry about its ability of destroying special summon monsters. So that's really good. I've got my third copy of Breakthrough Skill in here. That way if I'm running into a situation where I need that third copy, I have it. Uh, another card I've been trying out at one in the side deck is Booge Incident. And what this does is it basically returns all cards on the field 
back to their hand, but you have to have a Bujinic Seize monster on the field to do so. Which does you banish your one Bujinic Seize monster, return everything else on the field. Uh, for two turns, neither player can normal or special summon uh, cards, set, anything like that. So basically for two turns, you've prevented your opponent from summoning anything, and then on that second turn, your monster comes back with this as an added material, and there's your attack. Uh, Phoenix Wing Wing Blast, I love running this card. It, again, it throws a lot of people off. It allows me to get Turtle Engrave, Hair Engrave, uh, or set up for the uh, Hirume or Stu to play. Plus, it gets rid of one of my opponent's cards that they're not expecting, so that way I can keep stump from that way I can force them to have to draw something that they don't need right now. Uh, my second copy of Wiretap, in case I'm running into too many uh, trap cards that I need to worry, get rid of. Uh, a very underrated card, Mind Control, especially facing uh, Shadals, uh, Quill Offs. Light Sworn Rulers, anything like that. Uh, this allows you to get rid of that one key card that they need. So that's really nice to have. And finally, two debunks. Uh, even though this has gone down in playability and price, uh, I still like running it in the side deck just in case. So that way I can stop uh, monster effects from activating and uh, getting rid of them. So yeah, this has been my uh, Bujin deck profile. Don't forget like and uh, subscribe, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, don't forget to check us out on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. And this is Supreme Dragon of Hidden Dragon signing out.